And also I would like to inform you that uh, this presentation will be recorded and it will be also shared later on on the future EU Aqua website. Uh, sorry, I think this is the presentation mode, right? Now, okay, so that works. So the future EU Aqua project is a Horizon 2020 project with a, a large number of project partners. Altogether, we had 32 partners. Uh, it was kicked off in November 2018 and we are about to end we are in the final stages in April 2023 will be termination of the project. Um, and as you may know, in Europe, uh, we are still quite dependent on imports of fish and seafood products that we consume. So around 60% uh, um, of the products in Europe, fish and seafood are from imports. We have a self-sufficiency of only around 40%. Some countries it's even lower. So in Germany, for example, we import around 80% 80, 80 of our fish and seafood products. So uh, there is definitely a lot of space for improvement and um, for yeah uh, for widening the aquaculture sector here in Europe um, and for this research is needed and the aim of the future EU aqua project was therefore to effectively promote sustainable growth of climate change resilient environmental friendly organic and conventional aquaculture in Europe um, and to meet the future challenges that we have with respect to the growing consumer demand for high quality, nutritious and responsibly produced food. So today's topic, what are we going to hear today? It will be about quality and safety of aquaculture products. The question here is, can we adopt post-harvest non-thermal processing methods and packaging to improve the quality and safety of fish products. So the topic will deal with non-thermal processing of fish products to valorize aquaculture raw materials and we will identify optimal packaging to improve and to preserve the quality and safety of aquaculture products. Um, and um, the seminar will be presented today by Professor Francesco Capozzi, Dr. Morten Sivertswick and Professor, Professor Pietro Rocculli uh, from University of Bologna and Nofima in Norway. So please, um, I, sh I stop my sharing uh, and uh, dear presenters, I would like to ask you to start with your presentation. Thank you very much. We are very curious to hear what you have to tell us today. Francesco, you're still muted. Yeah, okay. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. And thank you for the nice uh, introduction. Uh, so what I'm going to show in this presentation is some kind of case study about the application of non-thermal processing for seafood stabilization and valorization. I, I write seafood because, uh, yeah, I mean, probably uh, what happened to a wild fish or, or a fish from aquaculture or a seafood product from aquaculture is quite the same. So the technology that we can apply are generally uh, right for both the situation. Um, so as uh, probably uh, you already know, uh, seafood are products that present uh, quite uh, high perishability in terms of physical phenomena, and biochemical and microbiological one. And also <clears throat> to this kind of food, we uh, always associate uh, the concept of freshness. Uh, so uh, we can understand why uh, non-thermal processing technology can find very good opportunity to be applied and to increase the potential of this kind of product. Why we apply new technology, new processing technology, particularly non-thermal processing technology, because we want to have new products in the market 
uh, uh, corresponding to consumer expectation in terms of nutritional and sensorial properties. And of course, in terms of health benefits and sensorial attributes. Uh, this product has to be safe. And this is something that come before the concept of quality. And of course, for the producers, uh, <clears throat> the producer has to have economic advantages in terms of cost, time, and efficiency of the, pro uh, of the process. And, uh, and of course, more and more, we are very uh, careful in considering waste reduction, reuse, byproduct valorization, and so on. In this presentation, we will see some examples on it. And particularly, we will start with technologies that are already applied in some uh, uh, process, real processing scenario. And we will pass to something that is more pioneering in terms of application. Um, <clears throat> the first example that I want to show you is uh, um, <clears throat> smoked salmon. And uh, we know that the quality of smoked salmon has to be quite high and during during smoking uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, physical chemical phenomena that happen and uh, but we can have some kind of problems in terms of quality loss like for example discoloration uh, softening and also uh, in some case if the smoking process is not properly applied we can have also uh, some kind of bad compounds let me say in the matter um, the first example is a comparison about conventional cold smoking and uh, uh, cryo smoking, where you use uh, uh, nitrogen, cold nitrogen, uh, to carry the smoke in the chamber and to perform a, a, a light smoking process. And uh, to do this, uh, we use the uh, pilot plants that we have in our university here in our processing area here. And uh, as you can see from this, uh, um, from this slide here, we have a liquid nitrogen that is connected to the smoking uh, pilot plants and uh, the nitrogen uh, carry the smoke inside the chamber. So we can work at quite low temperature. We applied five Celsius degree as smoking temperature, but also uh, we don't have air in the chamber during smoking. We just have nitrogen. So um, theoretically we can in some way decrease the oxidative, uh, oxidative processes during the smoking, uh, <clears throat> the smoking, uh, the smoke application, the smoking processing. And uh, this is uh, what we applied in our pilot plants in terms of pretreatments uh, uh, with dry salt, a mixture of salt and sucrose as is normally used in uh, before smoking for, for salmon. And we applied these two different uh, processing, uh, cold uh, conventional smoking at 20 Celsius degree with air and an innovative cryo smoking at five Celsius degree using nitrogen as a carrier of the smoke and for different smoking times. And we uh, uh, evaluate after some uh, time to equilibrate the sample, we analyze the samples for a lot of different uh, uh, quality parameters like sensorial properties, uh, texture, water activity, and so on. And uh, we apply the same approach after these uh, preliminary uh, trials in our processing plant. Uh, we applied the same approach, but in a real industrial scenario. And also in this case, we study the shelf life of the product in order to understand what happened also in terms of micro stability and other quality parameters. Just some very fast results. Uh, we got uh, quite interesting results in terms of microbes growth, uh, particularly for mesophiles and uh, enterobacteriaceae. And uh, we saw that uh, this cryo smoking increased the shelf life compared to the conventional one of about uh, the 20%. And uh, <clears throat> uh, the cold smoking was also more, more effective in terms of reduction of oxidation in the product because uh, probably because we, don't, we didn't have oxygen in the chamber during, during uh, the smoking process. Uh, while in terms of nutritional characteristic, nothing happened. Uh, uh, the determination of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons was also quite satisfying in both the conditions. So both the processing were in some way safe in terms of this enrichment of these problematic, let me say, uh, substances. 
The second technology that I want to uh, uh, show uh, in terms of some um, interesting result is uh, high pressure processing. It's already applied uh, uh, in all you know, the world, let me say, in the States, in Europe, and also in Asia and so on. And, uh, and uh, it's a process where we apply very high processing to usually to already pack food. And we have a uh, good effect in terms of microbes reduction comparable to thermal pasteurization. And also, uh, but we have to be careful uh, in terms of what happened to macromolecules like protein, lipids, carbohydrates, and also modification in visual quality and structure of the product. Uh, and there is a, this is a, a scheme where this process is uh, in some way summarized. We have already packed products in this case that enter in uh, uh, baskets. They are loaded in the basket. The basket enter in one cylinder. The cylinder uh, enter in a, in, a, in a chamber, in a closed chamber that is filled with water and at atmospheric pressure. After uh, this uh, filling, we have application of very high pressure to the chamber, to the water, and the water is the medium to transfer the pressure also to the packet food. And uh, usually this process uh, uh, has a period of time of five, 10 minutes maximum. After the application of this very high pressure, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, the restore of atmospheric uh, pressure uh, during the compression and final, uh, and at the end we have unloading of the chamber uh, with uh, from the water and also uh, the cylinders come out from the structure, the basket come out from the cylinders and the, uh, in the unloading area, the packages are removed from uh, the baskets. And uh, um, here, just some example of, of what we can do with the uh, high pressure uh, uh, pasteurization of product. Uh, when we use it for pasteurization, of course, we apply it to already packaged food, uh, as I mentioned before. Here's some example of, uh, of uh, salted cold uh, uh, stabilization, but also of shrimp, uh, burger, and salmon sausages. We can increase. In these cases, we can increase the shelf life from one week to more than one month. So it's a lot. Uh, but also uh, we can apply this processing as a processing step, for example, to perform some separation of flesh from carapace, like happened for lobster. You can see very high uh, um, uh, effectiveness of this separation step, but also it's applied to mollusk in order to create some kind of uh, uh, increase of weight and, and possibility to open a particularly difficult shell. Here uh, we have, uh, we study a, an example on mallet and uh, shrimp flesh packed in monoportions in, in order to create a new product uh, thought for, for example, aperitive or some kind of high convenience food products. We compare three different pressure applied for 10 minutes, four, five, and 600 megapascal. So uh, just to give you an idea of the, uh, of the level of the pressure that we apply. And, uh, and we study a lot of different kind of uh, uh, parameters. Uh, in terms of shelf life, you can see that we have a, 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 a very important reduction of, of microbial load at the beginning, comparing the blue curve to the, with the other ones. And also, uh, if we consider a limit of shelf life, for example, of six log uh, of CFU for grams of samples, we have an uh, important increase in shelf life from five, six days for both the product to 24 and more than 30 days for month. In terms of visual, visual quality, in this case, it's quite comparable with, uh, with cooking, but in, re in reality, in terms of taste and other parameters, it's very similar to the fresh samples. So, but we already have in Italy, in companies collaborating with us in the future of Waka product, we already have product in the market obtained in this situation. Uh, the last process that I want to show uh, is uh, more pioneering one. Uh, we are doing mainly study in the, in the lab where we apply cold plasma in gas plasma or liquid uh, uh, or plasma activated water. So liquid plasma in some way. Plasma is the fourth state of the matter. 
where uh, we uh, we give uh, more energy to gas and uh, in order to create uh, a plasma uh, very rich in electrons uh, and radicals and active species and in the in the ambit of the project we applied it for several applications the most interesting one was the sanitation of of uh, seabreen fillets uh, that were packed in modified atmosphere and uh, we were uh, quite uh, happy with the microbiological results particularly in terms of enterobacteriaceae reduction in psychophiles reduction and so prolonging the shelf life of the product and uh, and uh, of course is a oxidating treatment so we can have some kind of induction of oxidation but was in the limit uh, in particular, it was not uh, uh, perceived by sensorial panel. The last application of plasma activated water that we tried was to, in order to inhibit the melanosis in crustaceans. And uh, we compare this uh, washing treatment with this activated water with, uh, with more conventional anti browning. Uh, processing uh, like uh, the application of course of, of sulfates but also of for exit resource in all and we study with an uh, image analysis system the browning of different kind uh, different species let me say of shrimps this is just an example of what uh, we got uh, these uh, normal uh, melanosis that happen in the shrimps but with the application of, of plasma activated water for particular species was quite evident the anti-browning effect. And if we think uh, that sulfates are, are broadly applied to shrimps, it could be an interesting solution also in terms of thin label alternative to classic chemical browning uh, inhibitors. And uh, the last input, the last, uh, let me say, example that I want to do is uh, uh, that uh, no thermal processing uh, particularly for mass transfer increase can have a very uh, good opportunity to be applied also for byproduct valorization of seafoods. Here an example of extraction of ketosan, ketone and ketosan from carapace of squillamantis, a typical crustacean of the Adriatic Sea, but also can be a pretreatment to biotechnological uh, processes using particular microbial species to make, for example, fermentation of modification of byproducts. Uh, to be uh, used for all that kind of application. Here are some companies that we are collaborating also in the ambit of the of the project, and um, and some very uh, interesting new products that is already on the market uh, uh, as a combination of non thermal processing and uh, new neglected species that we get both from aquaculture and uh, and uh, wild uh, and fisheries. And uh, what we are doing here in Cesena. Uh, is to apply this processing for industrial research. Uh, we have a specific industrial research centers for food application. And Francesco is the director of these centers. And uh, we have very interesting uh, um, competencies, that uh, integrated competencies to, uh, to be applied for uh, new product development and other uh, development of food industry. And but it is very important to be done with the pilot plants. We have to simulate processing in small scale in order to get interesting information to be scaled up at industrial level. Thank you for the attention. Okay, thank you, Pietro. Now is the turn of uh, Professor uh, Morten Silvestick, and uh, he will talk about uh, uh, packaging and uh, the effect of uh, dietary uh, improvement also in the packet uh, people, uh, packet fish. Please, Morten. Thank you, Francesco. Um, you see my screen. The yes, perfect. Yes, good. good. Yes, I'm from uh, Morten. I'm from Nofima, which is a research institute in Norway, working for the both the agri-food and the seafood industry, fisheries, and uh, the whole aquaculture research uh, in, uh, industry uh, research for the industry. And uh, I will today speak about um, 
uh, packaging and also a new diet for Atlantic salmon that has been developed in future EU aqua. So this is uh, looking at the quality of salmon fed different diets and packaged in the different methods and following the quality during storage. Um, I'm research director for um, the Department of Processing Technology in uh, Nofima, which is basically everything working on everything, food processing, preservation, packaging, mainly on seafood, but also on agri-food agri uh, chain. Okay, uh, I will jump past this because this is already shown by, by uh, Stefan. Um, this is the background for why we look uh, into uh, new feed for, the, um, for, for salmon because we need to produce more food in the next uh, decades than we have for the last uh, 8,000 years. So we need uh, sustainable feed uh, sources for uh, to be identified and we need to reduce packaging material. We have to use packaging material on seafood because we want to extend shelf life and keep the quality so we reduce food waste but we can reduce the amount of plastics we use in contact with the um, food. So it reduction without compromising shelf life and quality. So this is what we did. Uh, and the, fu the future EU Aquafeed was developed uh, by Nofima uh, in the Aquafeed um, Technology Center in Bergen in, in Norway. And it consisted of then replacing uh, uh, fish meal, which is used uh, in the commercial feed today with uh, we just reduced to 25% and we removed the soy that is added today and we reduced the fish oil to 50% and then it was replaced with black soldier fly larvae meal, which is insect meal, and also a uh, acryl um, uh, oil hydrolysate and also a small uh, a microalgae uh, to add the, for, uh, to uh, replace the, the oil and also added wheat gluten to the to the salmon feed. For packaging, we uh, went from the what is today the industry standard on the left side here, which is uh, modified atmosphere packaged salmon in uh, carbon dioxide nitrogen and compared it to a novel approach using about 50% less packaging material um, with a vacuum skin packaging. So we'd reuse both reduce transportation cost and also plastic use and also remove the packaging need for packaging gas, which also is a cost element. Uh, the raw material was produced up in Gilde School, which is uh, far north, uh, outside, uh, not so far from Bode, we see if you're familiar in, 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 in Norwegian geography. And uh, it was produced there for about uh, 545 days until it was uh, slaughtered and gutted at Gifas and then transported down to Stavanger, where we are located, southwest in Norway. And the salmon then uh, was filleted here. Um, six days after post-mortem. The future EU aqua salmon was um, almost the same length as the, the conventional, but a slightly less average weight, but quite similar um, in size. We then uh, did the peer trial on um, modified atmosphere versus skin packaging, which means that we use the right fillets of the of the, um, uh, each fish for packaging in modified atmosphere and the left for skin packaging. So we can uh, be able to compare pairwise uh, difference between the packaging method. We stored all this at um, uh, four degrees and we did sampling uh, from different parts of the fillets for micro um, biology, um, water holding capacity, drip loss, pH, 
texture and color. And we did sampling after nine days, 13, 16, 20, and 33 days after uh, slaughtering or in fillet days uh, as a, a in packaging from three up to 16 days then. Uh, prior to this, we have done a trial that is already published on uh, comparing the two packaging methods. Um, uh, and what we found there that uh, skin packaging give a comparable quality in drip loss, water holding capacity, texture and microbial shelf life as in modified atmosphere. And uh, you have um, uh, almost similar shelf life. Uh, this was also, you also had air here for control. So, so you had, um, you can extend compared to air at four degrees, extend uh, shelf life of um, about 50% compared to air in using modified atmosphere on skin packaging. We, we don't in, in this trial I go, go through now, we, don't, we did nothing. The diet, which is, is uh, good. Um, you can hear me. Martin, a little bit worse than before, but we can hear you. You can hear you now? Yes, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, um, microbial, we don't didn't see an effect on diet on microbial growth. That was one a small effect on on um, packaging material, um, packaging method, uh, a little less microbial growth in the modified atmosphere because of the carbon dioxide inside the, the gas uh, mix there. But uh, a similar uh, development during time for both mesophilic and psychotrophic uh, bacteria. It's quite similar for pH. We have a, a little less pH in, in the modified atmosphere um, package because of um, the carbon dioxide, which is a weak acid. So you often see a slight pH reduction there compared to skin. No effect of, of diet here also. Um, on drip loss, uh, a little bit, a bit higher drip loss in skin versus uh, than in the modified atmosphere, but uh, it's it's quite low if you compare with the 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 the, the, the number. This is percent, so it's uh, around less than two, uh, one and a half percent for modified atmosphere after 16, 18 days of storage, and uh, around three percent for for um, skin, which is um, quite low. Uh, no effect on diet here either which is also a good um, water holding capacity. We see the opposite effect as uh, for drip loss because it's not so very surprising. If, if uh, you lose water, you will get higher water holding capacity. So it, these are inversely related. So, um, so a, little, a little higher water holding capacity on skin, which lose more water. So that's um, logical. For color, we didn't see any effect when we did this uh, ANOVA GLM uh, statistics uh, on, on color. Um, um, we see a, a lightness uh, increase and a yellowness increase as a function of time. But, it, but when we, uh, since we did left and right uh, sampling um, uh, of map versus skin, we could see an effect on the packaging method when we looked at the, the pairwise uh, testing for both lightness uh, L and also yell uh, yellowness, uh, which is B, uh, where skin uh, packaging products is being slightly darker and slightly less yellow, which is uh, a positive. No effect on diet, on color, no effect on diet. Uh, yeah, except on the texture. Very interesting. We didn't see any. Uh, we did see an effect that the salmon that has been fed the futuristic insect-based meal has a more firm uh, texture. Also, uh, the skin package salmon has more is more firm than the map salmon and. 
that is a positive thing that uh, fish flesh is more firm. So it's a positive effect on the diet here. So to conclude, this is the a picture of uh, skin packaged um, salmon fillets. Uh, vacuum skin packaging can be a good alternative to modified atmosphere packaging. It's give a similar shelf life increase, uh, slightly better color and firmer fillets. It, it could represent a more sustainable packaging solution for the salmon industry. With the, when we take into account that you can reduce the plastic used per portion, and then without compromising the quality, and uh, we not have an increased food loss here. And remember, this is trial is done at four degrees. Uh, the most important thing to control when we talk about shelf life and quality of fish is temperature. So the best way to keep quality is to control temperature around zero degrees. And this would, um, we can find lots of publications that show that if you can increase, decrease the temperature from four degrees to around zero degrees, you're almost doubling the shelf life only by temperature control. So don't forget about temperature. And conclusion about feed, we don't, didn't see any negative effects on uh, on the post harvest quality on salmon fed and insects based futuristic diet, which is positive. That could be an alternative protein search for the future. Uh, only one significant effect observed that it gave more firm fillets and then better texture. So, so uh, insect meal and a single cell saprotrophic eukaryotes, uh, eukaryotes uh, which is a um, macroalgae could be a future replacement of traditional fish meal and oils, which are a limiting factor for future aquaculture. So thank you for listening to me. I uh, hope you have some questions at the end. And thank you to Future Aqua for funding this. Thank you very much, Morten. That was highly interesting. Uh, you know, we are talking a lot about microplastics, the issue with microplastics. So whatever can help us to reduce the use of plastic and it's of course yeah, very helpful um, so thanks a lot for that and uh, now Francesco you are the next one please go ahead with your presentation yes thank you I'm just going to share my screen hoping that it will work as before so please tell me if uh, we have uh, the yes, same looks screen good. Looks good okay it. perfect and 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 um, okay, uh, I'm just uh, taking the uh, the word after uh, Pietro and Martin. Uh, that I believe that uh, is uh, interesting. Um, the requirement of uh, um, let's say affordable but also reliable parameters to evaluate quality. So when you compare technologies that are uh, processing the um, raw matter, the fish flesh, and uh, you are also uh, looking for uh, alternative diets or a uh, new packaging, then you have to compare the control and the treatment, the control and the thesis uh, quality. So uh, what is quality is uh, really relevant because it depends on uh, on uh, what is uh, your interest if uh, your interest is a uh, nutritional property or it is the sensorial property or uh, the environmental sustainability so you have a uh, different parameters that uh, you can uh, look at when you uh, think that uh, quality and safety should be guaranteed and uh, um, let's say just one uh, one more detail in this and then we'll, let's go on Quality doesn't mean bad on good. Quality means the composition, the structure, what is the matter, the food matter. Then it's a definition, the best definition. No, It could be low or high definition of this quality. And then you can add the attribute or the adjective, good, low, bad, quality but before that you have to define what are the parameters so 
Uh, you can uh, see at uh, the texture, you can see at uh, the microbial load, you can see uh, if, uh, let me just, uh, sorry, uh, start with uh, uh, defining the, okay, I, I hope that you can see the point. So let's go to the, the, the my definition of quality, which is a holistic definition. Phodomics means that it's based on uh, the ohms information. Ohms means uh, holistic, everything. I have uh, Mario, good, ah, okay. Uh, so, phodomics and molecular profiles, why? Because we are not deciding uh, before what is uh, necessary to define. But let's look at what is uh, differentiating, different treatments, different uh, you know, treatment processing, treatment, but also diets. So when you compare something, you look at the parameters that are relevant to characterize, to classify, and to distinguish between different samples. So this is uh, the reason why we need to uh, work with the ohms. So with the uh, genomics, if it has some effect on the on the in the previous uh, webinars, probably. You have also attended who is a genomist, but also proteomics, it's very important. And I will stick on the molecular profiles, which are which is much more related to the metabolomics, so to the metabolome. Metabolome is uh, the whole set of metabolites within an organism. So it's uh, the phenotype, it's the end of the cascade of the life processes. And so, if you want to define the quality, probably you have to look at the metabolome to the whole sets of all substances that are within the uh, biological system. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this is uh, something that has to, uh, to define also the, the quality of fish. And uh, you see that uh, this is the, 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 the the normal, the conventional way to define the quality of fish related to the fresh fish, uh, to the fish freshness. So it's very relevant because it's a product which is really very, very perishable. Uh, since uh, they uh, they are rich on uh, polyunsaturated fat, so they become uh, uh, oxidated uh, easily, and uh, you can have a rancid. Uh, effects and acidic oxidation effects and that affect of course the sensorial characteristics sensory characteristics but also the safety because uh, on uh, on the flesh rich in uh, also free amino acids and also uh, nutrients uh, available to microbes the microbes will develop very well if you have not uh, any control on them so, uh, when we define the uh, fresh fish, uh, you, you see that fresh fish uh, should um, be characterized by all the best uh, level of these characteristics. So, it's uh, the sensory uh, characteristics related to flavor and to the appearance, physical characteristics, so the texture, the protein content, because uh, proteins are, as uh, you may understand, are uh, the, the the feed for microbes, and uh, not only, but also for autogenous processes that are uh, degrading proteins and releasing amino acids. As I told you, uh, lipids are um, going and uh, are subject to the uh, enzymatic oxidation, and uh, uh, we have the development of uh, some compounds that give to the uh, to the to the fresh fish the right smell. So we are talking about the the smell of freshness. And of course, you have also uh, related to uh, safety, the microbial aspects. And also, the uh, freshness is related to something which happens when the fish die. So it's not more uh, living, it's not more producing ATP and other energetic compounds related to the energy balance. And so, uh, when, uh, when you have a fresh fish, you have a very high, uh, high energy ATP uh, and low uh, levels of ATP metabolites. So the fresh fish 
and the, but the good quality, the good quality fish, here uh, expressed as the smiling fish, is uh, is something which is characterized by several uh, different uh, properties, but all of them are related to molecules, to substances. Even the microbial aspects uh, are related to uh, compounds that are released or uh, consumed by microbes. And so uh, you can uh, measure the degradation by looking at the, the opposite aspects that we saw. So uh, uh, that the, 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 the flavor are completely different. The texture is uh, flabby. Uh, you have a high proteolysis, uh, ex oxidation, level of uh, the, uh, um, the, 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 the amine uh, uh, smell, uh, characteristic of uh, old fish. So you have also high microbial load and high level of uh, metabolites uh, um, coming out from the degradation of ATP. We will see that each of these parameters could be used to follow, to monitor the quality. So, uh, as uh, uh, both uh, Morten and Pietro uh, underline, um, we can say that uh, we can, uh, we can cons uh, consume uh, fish before uh, the expiration date. That could be calculated by this kind of uh, uh, curves uh, that are fitting points uh, in which you are uh, uh, putting in a graphic uh, some parameters. In this case, the number of colony forming uh, microbe, uh, microbes and uh, logarithmic function and the time. So when you uh, look at the growing uh, curve of this growth curve of this bacteria, you will see that there is some lag phase where uh, uh, you, you are uh, pretty, pretty uh, sure that you are not developing uh, microbes. Then you have an exponential phase, which should be kept uh, as uh, later as possible by, uh, for instance, uh, by uh, decreasing the loading, but also the, the initial loading, but also by working really with a very uh, tight uh, uh, temperature control so that the effect that Morton has expressed before that four degrees, just four degrees be, uh, be behind zero uh, will be, will be um, affecting negatively, really negatively the shelf life. The shelf life, shelf life is the time no? that uh, the product uh, requires to, uh, to still be under some kind of threshold that you decide in terms of uh, uh, safety or quality uh, demand. And uh, if you decide that there is a threshold, okay, so here you have here um, the, 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 not, the, the acceptable parameter uh, that has been decided that should be not uh, uh, over, over, overgone. Uh, then you have, uh, then you have uh, uh, to decide if uh, after this time, this uh, sample, this product has to be uh, consumed or not. According to this definition, this is still in uh, after this time and uh, after this time on this uh, uh, abscissa, abscissa coordinate, you have to discard it. So, but this is just one parameter. What about all the other parameters that we can select? So it's just uh, make a, make your choice by using only one detail, no, uh, or a, a very uh, low definition of the matter that you are uh, um, looking for uh, for uh, for your choice, no. Uh, so please uh, decide on uh, just on a very low uh, definition uh, description of the sample or of the uh, biological system that you are uh, evaluating, that you are monitoring. Uh, this is uh, more or less how the, uh, the, the old people, the, the old scientists, uh, were uh, defined the quality of food based on, uh, for instance, on the amount of proteins or amount of fat. Uh, it's a very low definition. It's not enough to, to make a, 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 a conscious choice. So you need the, 
more details, still not uh, sufficient to make a conscious choice, then you start to have a higher definition. And with the highest definition, you can have uh, uh, the, mm, the elements no? for, uh, uh, for making a conscious choice. And you can decide who is your uh, uh, preferred uh, actor. Okay, and uh, uh, this is the same as in, uh, in science. Uh, you need a high definition uh, profile uh, to uh, decide if uh, um, something is different from the other one. So uh, let, let me tell you that uh, before telling that one product is better than the other, it's uh, important to say that it's different from the other. If you don't find uh, statistical differences between uh, samples, you cannot say that one is better than the other. You can almost only say that uh, it is better where, when you are able to characterize and to differentiate from other individuals, like we do with the, with the voice. No, uh, This is a spe spectrum uh, of the human voice, and you know that you can, uh, this is uh, uh, the frequency, um, the, the time domain, this is the frequency domain of the same profile. And uh, just by overlapping, no, to fitting this curve with uh, another individual, you, if they, the two profiles are uh, completely overlapping each other, that means that uh, you have uh, uh, the same individual uh, as in the, your database. But uh, you can do that uh, the same with a um, fingerprint, no? And uh, we use uh, the same approach as uh, uh, fingerprint in NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, by using the spectrum, NMR spectrum, to identify uh, samples and to classify samples and to differentiate each from the others. And uh, uh, the, 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 in this way, uh, the profile it's a high definition representation of the whole molecular content of this individual of this organism or a molecular or a biological system and then you can express your quality and you can based on these parameters and on these profiles molecular profile you can make your control and say if it is good or bad so this is the uh, the uh, um, example of uh, NMR spectrum from fish uh, extracts, okay? And, uh, and uh, we can uh, uh, see that there are several peaks. We call them uh, signals because they are not uh, uh, associated uh, each peak to one uh, uh, molecule. But uh, to define one molecule, we may need, we may have different, different uh, signals. For instance, uh, you see here that taurine, is associated to two peaks, six and nine. So peak six and nine are uh, defined in taurine. If you have only one of these and not both of them, you are sure that you are not in presence of taurine. And uh, you can analyze and go to the metabolomics approach. You can analyze each spectrum at once. So defining uh, this profile, assigning signals by signals and uh, uh, calculating the amount by the area of, the, of each signal, or you can do multivariate data analysis, which is an approach, uh, it's a branch of uh, artificial intelligence, let's say, uh, that uh, make a, a classification based on clustering. So uh, each spectrum, so each individual, is characterized by one of these symbol, okay? Uh, so each one, it, uh, is associated to the whole uh, NMR spectrum, not to only one signal, and uh, only uh, every every spectrum is represented by this data point in this multivariate space. So this is made by a mathematical uh, uh, elaboration of uh, thousand or hundreds of spectra, and then each each uh, uh, spectrum associated to the individual. Uh, lies on a specific part of this uh, uh, plan. Okay, this is the metabolomics plan uh, of space. So then uh, you can see that uh, it is not the easy task to differentiate and to classify uh, profiles because uh, the, the, the majority of signals uh, associated to each uh, 
to each sample is very, very similar to the other profiles, very small differences. So if you are looking to hundreds or thousands or individuals, you are not able to just take a look at the, at, uh, by one glance at the spectrum to see which is belonging to group A or to group B of this uh, uh, population. So uh, multivariate data analysis, we make the job for you like this one. No, my well, brain, our brain is doing the same. It's doing the same because it's not looking details, uh, in all details in a photograph, okay? But it's comparing point by point. It's uh, in immediate to see that there is uh, some uh, uh, missing students in my class and uh, some of them are uh, moving the head, but it is not relevant to, uh, for the information that we need. Uh, if the molecule or if the individual is present or not in the environment. So we use a, such kind of uh, approach to have a map of metabolomes, okay, uh, associated to each species. And we saw, we observed that there is a, a, an effect, of course, this is a wild fish, it's mackerel and bog, while uh, for sea bream and sea bass, uh, we look at for uh, uh, aquaculture products. You see that there is a separation in this uh, in this uh, uh, metabolic metabolomic space. There is a separation due to the uh, to the species, of course, due to the uh, season, but also to the aquaculture system. And uh, the aquaculture system is more relevant than the species in this case. They are more, much more similar each other, so the sea bream is similar to sea bass compared to the rest of the of the population of uh, uh, of species uh, and uh, and uh, uh, different conditions. So we are not saying that they are very similar, but compared to the other uh, specific uh, quality parameters uh, based on the whole molecular profile, you will have more similarity between species than uh, uh, between different uh, aquaculture system. How easy it is to prepare samples for making this kind of approach? It's very easy. It's just extracting, centrifuging, and taking uh, the water uh, fraction and putting the in the NMR spectrum uh, spectro uh, spectrometer, which is this one, and then you get uh, uh, spectra and you can make multivariate data analysis to see, for instance, that uh, four diets applied to uh, sea bream, okay, have a different effect on, on, on the metabolome, okay? Then we can also uh, in, in, uh, consider, no, uh, uh, assign what are the molecules which are responsible for this uh, differentiation and calcification. But you can see that uh, the uh, commercial conventional diet are, uh, produce fish with a similar metabolic profile to the commercial organic. So these two are uh, in dark uh, uh, brown and in orange are both from commercial uh, diets, okay, but one is uh, uh, organic, the, 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 the darker one, and one is uh, uh, in the commercial conventional. If you look at the future aqua diets that we have developed, uh, we have also conventional uh, uh, future aqua and organic future aqua. You have a, a very good classification. So then you can start to say uh, and ask yourself if it is one better than the other because you can say that these two are different and are different from these two while the commercial one both organic or uh, uh, conventional are more similar and are more difficult to be distinguished so it's uh, very easy for who is uh, uh, able to run nmr experiment to classify identify molecules within uh, the spectrum okay so you can uh, 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 easily uh, identify creatine, betaine, and so on. And so you can make some kind of this comparison, the usual comparison no, between different diets, uh, what is uh, uh, within uh, one diet uh, um, with respect to the other. But remember that these products, these molecules, are not selected before doing the analysis. 
are selected as the one that are responsible for the previous uh, for the previous uh, classification. So before doing everything, we do multivariate data analysis to differentiate. Then we look at the, what are the metabolites which are responsible for this classification along the two axes, for instance, and then we class the, we identify and then we can quantify. So identify and then quantify the molecules which are responsible for the classification and differentiation. And we did it the same with the salmon, okay, with two diets. And also after, after uh, cryosmoked, the, um, the, the, the technology that the Pietro, or the Professor Pietro Roccoli explained before. And so we see that there is an effect of the molecule content of the samples which are uh, subjected to the uh, cryosmoked uh, and uh, fresh salmon. But we can also see that there is an effect of the diet because uh, diet uh, we call uh, with the code 204 and 202. Uh, so the two diets, the, 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 the circle one and the uh, square one, are separated along this axis. Okay, so the main differentiation is due to the treatment, but also the diet differentiate in the fresh between uh, the two diets. But when we process the the fish, then the two the two population become closer. So there is some kind of a flattening of the quality uh, thanks to the, to the uh, process. And we can use the same, the same uh, map, the metabolomic map, to see, for instance, uh, what happens to fish balls, which are treated with some kind of uh, um, byproducts that also uh, Professor Rockley explained before, so ketosan. So we added uh, uh, two different chitosan in uh, in uh, in uh, these fish balls and uh, we see that metabolomics is able to distinguish between these uh, products okay these three products the uh, artisanal ketosan the uh, commercial ketosan and the uh, fish balls without without ketosan and this is the effect of the processing but we can see also the effect of the shelf life so of the time on this uh, on this uh, on these parallels and we see that uh, there is a parallel of evolution faster in uh, if you if you report the uh, pc1 value so the the coordinate of each data point on this axis against the storage time you can see that there is a um, a larger a larger uh, evolution in, uh, in uh, products without ketosane uh, compared to ketosane. So this is something that you can follow not by selecting the variable, the parameters that you believe it's better to uh, describe, to, to be used for describing the quality, but it's the quality itself that is uh, um, putting, uh, putting out uh, the best variable which is responsible for the highest variation, for the highest change. Okay, I hope that uh, I give you the, uh, the, 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 the general uh, flavor of what metabolomics means and what it's able to do. Thank you very much and uh, do not hesitate to, uh, to make questions now and uh, also by email. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Francesco. Thanks a lot also, Morton and Pietro. It was very interesting, I must say. Um, especially, you know, we are talking a lot about food losses nowadays, and we know that a lot of, of that food loss is happening on level of the supermarket because they have to throw away products which, which are beyond the shelf life. So yeah. all, all research that we do and which can help to extend the shelf life, which help to preserve, will, will help us to preserve food uh, and will reduce the, the food losses that we have. So that's that research that we have is really affecting our, our daily real life. So I, I like it a lot. Thank you very much. Um, and now I would like to open the question and answer session. So please, everyone, now this is the time for you to ask your questions. You can either raise your hand, but I'm not really sure if I can see your hands here. Maybe Gaio 
you need to give me a hand uh, or you just type a question in the chat box or you may just speak out loudly that's maybe the easiest so please is anyone anyone has some questions Well, while the people are still thinking, I used the chance to ask a question myself. <clears throat> Pietro, I was, uh, I'm, I'm especially interested in the melanosis uh, topic, and this is a little bit of background information to the audience. They may not necessarily know what melanosis is. So uh, if we have a farm shrimp, what happens after the harvest? Um, as soon as the shrimp gets in contact with the air, with the oxygen in the air, they start getting black spots. It's a similar process like when you cut an apple. It's like an enzymatic process. Uh, and um, it starts in the shrimp, it starts usually in the head. So especially if you want to sell head on shrimp, this is a real issue um, that um, shrimp producers have. And what they usually do, what the industry usually does is they treat the shrimp with metabisulfide. Um, that prevents quite effectively those black spots, but of course um, it's it's sulfide, which some people react allergic to. So it has you can have some neg negative eff effect to the consumers. It's an E number that you have to declare on the product, um, which which some um, sellers just don't like. So. Uh, the difficulty is there's not really an alternative. So even in organic aquaculture, it is allowed to use these metabisulfide. So if there would be any kind of alternative, chemical free, etc., which is equally effective, uh, I think that would be uh, that would have a huge impact on the on the shrimp industry. And my question would be, uh, Pietro, this uh, the, the plasma treatment that you uh, that you introduced to us. Um, I was I didn't quite understand. Now this is comparably effective uh, to metabisulfide, so this is just as effective or less effective. Or can you say something about that? Can it be quantified? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for for uh, for the question. Yeah, you will describe very well. I mean, uh, what is the phenomenon on the basis of <clears throat> of these uh, of these uh, color modifications? But for fruit and vegetable, where we have polyphenol oxidase, for example, fresh cut, normally you can use some kind of deep in treatment, no? using some organic acid like ascorbic and citric and so on. And you can prevent this phenomena and slow down very well this phenomena because of the surface. But with, with the shrimps, as you mentioned, and the crustacean in general, the problem is that you have, you have it inside, particularly on the head. And so, uh, uh, yeah, surface is still the, 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 the normal treatment that they do, but we know that surface can give some problems also for wine production. We are trying to, you know, substitute surface with other kind of antioxidants. And uh, I can say that, that the plasma is quite interesting because, um, uh, because you have, Consider that you have water with very low pH. We have active species that can, that can uh, in some way inactivate uh, the, the enzymes, inactivating it with the uh, degradation of the proteic part of the enzymes. And uh, But the problem is to make it enter inside. So we use plasma activated water together with vacuum impregnation to, to get this water inside. We had good results, uh, but it was very species specific. For example, with the pink shrimps was very effective, but while, for example, uh, with the, with the uh, other kind of, of species was not so effective. Another alternative that is applied in the south of Italy is uh, for the resource node, that is another uh, anti-branding substances. So I can summarize that we got uh, interesting result. We, we didn't solve everything. We have some kind of color modification, but now we are trying to create eyes with uh, uh, plasma water. So if we are able to stabilize plasma in ice, and we can have also during storage, you know, under ice, 
we can have melting of ice and uh, uh, active action of ice during storage. And this could be a good opportunity, at least for fresh shrimps. For frozen ones, the story is a little bit different, but yeah, uh, I think uh, we have to work on it still. We, we have uh, potential, let me say. <laughs> Great, no, but that sounds really sounds really promising. Thanks a lot. Um, so let me just see. I think we have. I'm gonna have a look at the chat. We have a question in the chat here. Um, Mr. Akshay Patil uh, has a question. What is the acceptable limit of free fatty acid peroxide value and TVBN in fresh seafood? Acceptable limit of free fatty acid peroxide value. Um, that's the question yeah, to you. I don't know what, what exactly is meant by acceptable limit, probably not a legal limit, but maybe by, I don't know, consumer acceptable or, or uh, you know, retailer specific acceptable limit. So yeah, I, but I pass on the question to you. Maybe you. you yeah, well, there is not a regulation defining, at least in Europe, but I, I'm quite sure uh, in all the world, we don't have a specific limit of these uh, uh, oxidative uh, substances. What they do, it's uh, a sensory perception of oxidation bound to this limit. So it's more a sensorial uh, um, evaluation, depending, of course, with the kind of product you have. Uh, if it's more or less per um, perception. Yes. I will say, I will say, uh, Pietro, that uh, uh, both questions are inspiring uh, a, a very important uh, answer, which is uh, what is relevant for uh, uh, for uh, defining the quality, no? Because uh, it's uh, the TVB, the total uh, volatile uh, uh, basis, uh, uh, relevant. It's relevant if. Uh, the product uh, becomes uh, unacceptable from the sensory point of view because they smell as a uh, low, low, low quality and uh, old fish, let's say. But also for, uh, for the uh, oxidation products uh, of lipids, okay, uh, oxidation of lipids, you, uh, you must know that uh, the reaction are radicalic. So they are not just uh, producing something which is uh, uh, remaining, which remain in the product, but they are still evolving in other products. So probably you will not find after a while those uh, peroxides because they are decomposing in other products which are uh, impacting more on the sensory properties. So the rancidic pro uh, um, feeling of that product is something which is evolving later on. So some kind of parameters are useful for uh, giving you not the acceptability, but giving you the idea of uh, the freshness, for instance. But uh, you know that there is also some campaign for anti anti uh, waste and anti food loss in uh, Europe, saying that probably we should revise the definition of the expiration date because we are uh, wasting a lot of food just because they go over the expiration date, although the quality as a food is still acceptable. So that means that we have to select among different parameters and decide what is relevant. Because uh, I, in my opinion, if the shrimp is uh, with a black spot, doesn't mean that is uh, no more edible means that is not looking like uh, uh, just uh, harvested. Okay, so if you are using uh, fish that you pretend that they are harvested just uh, uh, one hour before, you have to pretend that has no black spot. But if you are accepting that this is uh, something which is stored very well under ice for uh, four days, six days, and is still good from the, uh, from the healthy and from the nutritional point of view and also from the sensorial, uh, except for the visual inspection, then it, you, you can change you know, the, the, the opinion in the consumers. So I think that the consumer should be uh, educated to select 
properties that are much more relevant to the quality that is uh, uh, in, in, in interacting with your health, with your wellness, with your appreciation, and uh, discard uh, some other properties because otherwise uh, we will have a lot of food waste. Even though, and I, I, I believe that it's better to have black spotted uh, uh, shrimps than uh, uh, shrimps uh, added with the bisulfite. Yeah, uh, Francesco, I think that's a really very good point. We we have a, we had the similar thing with vegetables. You know, people were expecting vegetables, apples, and everything to look like you know freshly polished, everything totally clean. But especially in organic, this is not always the case. And uh, it, it took a little while, you know, to educate the consumers to say, okay, maybe this this fruit, this apple may not, this pear may may not look totally perfect, but it it absolutely is. It's fresh. It's healthy. It, it shows you that it's organic because it's it's not super uh, it's like like a painting. Uh, and I think people will start to understand actually that at least for fruits and vegetables, it may be a, um, quite a challenge also for other products, especially for seafood, because people are not such experts for seafood. But I think it's uh, possible to educate them in that way also, for sure. Yeah. Yes, I think that uh, probably uh, the odor. The the uh, the all fact, it's more important, more relevant for uh, the quality and safety than the uh, or the texture. For texture is something that uh, is uh, you know the there is uh, stiffing and then uh, uh, because it's a rigor mortis and then so it's something which is evolving in up and down. Uh, but uh, uh, but um, the smell is. Uh, we are very sensitive, and if Pietro showed, but also Martin showed that uh, shown that uh, uh, some parameters are relevant from the analytical point of view, but the consumer were not uh, uh, were not aware of the change, so we're not able to uh, uh, to measure no, by, by by themselves. So um, I think that we should make some kind of priority in the parameters that we should use in, uh, in uh, uh, Japanese people like uh, uh, fish, uh, uh, fish the, the, day, uh, the, day, the, day, the same day, and they are using the K index. The K index is the ratio between ATP and uh, all the metabolites that I show in you, and it's a, it's a part of the uh, of the algorithm uh, included in the metabolomics. So it's included, and they want to have fish with a very high K value, so with, with very uh, high quantity of ATP compared to the other uh, metabolites, no energy uh, energy metabolites. But then there are fish that are even after no. 10 minutes after fishing, they have already low level uh, of K-index. K and welfare, welfare, fish welfare, is very relevant for this, because fish without stress have a very high K-index. K, uh, fish that are fishing uh, just uh, one minute uh, before, but are stressed, but they will have a, a very low level. So. I think that there are many aspects that should be considered when you talk about quality. This is why a, a holistic way is the best, the best Absolutely. Uh, opportunity. Absolutely agree. Uh, let me have a look at the at the chat box. Um, yeah, we have another question. Will the recorded version be available in YouTube? Yes, we will upload it on our future EU Aqua website. So please visit the website. You will be able to, to to see it there, and we have also a YouTube channel, so uh, it will also be available on our YouTube channel. So, is there any more question? I don't see any hands or any question in the chat box. So then, um, what I would like to ask Guy: Would you be able to please send uh, the link to the survey into the chat box? Um, and I would like to ask you, please, um, maybe right after the seminar, if you find uh, one, two minutes time to fill out the form, uh, that will be a very um, valuable feedback for us. 
Also so, from uh, our side or only the attendees? Uh, from the attendees and also okay. from your side. So everybody, please. Okay. So then again, thank you very much to the presenters. Thanks to the audience for attending. Um, we have at least, oh, I see one more message, just a second. Ah, Sylvia has added the YouTube channel. Okay, so here you can you can see, you can see the YouTube channel where um, the video will be uploaded. Thanks again to everyone, and I'm, I would like to close the seminar for today. We have one more seminar left, uh, but we have not fixed the date yet, but we will send to, uh, to all the registered participants, we will send you a link, so then um, you will also be able to participate in the last one. Thanks a lot and goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.